and I laugh about this and I say, hey, I call myself the Black Moses. Because now, <laughs> well, because now I'm, I'm trying to raise. Can, can that can that be can that be the title of this episode, please? I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm because now I'm trying to go back and get my family and say, hey, you guys. It's you against you. It's not against the other competitors. It's you against you going out and saying, okay, that was my first show. I got that experience. Well, what can I do to get better? Howdy, everybody, and welcome to episode 171 of the SupersetYourLife.com podcast, your weekly dose of entertainment, education, and inspiration to fuel your life inside the gym as well as beyond the gym. Benny Mobley is an IPE and WNBF professional bodybuilder, motivational speaker, and a fitness trainer specializing in building both muscle and self-confidence. Although I've been inspired by this man ever since my first show in 2017, we met in person for the first time last weekend exchanging guest posing performances at the Open Natural Bodybuilding Competition in Kirkland, Washington. Hiro Chang refers to him as the legend, and for a good reason. After Benny's performance, I had the honor to ask him questions related to natural bodybuilding for the entire crowd to hear. He left an impression on athletes and spectators alike about what a lifestyle of treating your body like a temple can look like. I didn't want this talk to end. I only had to stop asking questions to get on with the evening part of the show. So you can consider this podcast episode as a continuation of that conversation. What I admire most about Benny is he doesn't even take a compliment. His answer to any praise he receives, I don't care if it's in person or on Instagram, is just glory to God. And uh, that's humility. Benny mentioned his favorite Bible verse is 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which is, No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with a temptation will also come the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. And that's New King James Version. Benny, shall we pray? Yes, let's do it. All right. Lord of hosts, master of the universe, you are faithful to all who call you Lord. You are the one who delivers us from falling to what is sinful. We know right from wrong because of your communication through your holy scriptures, the evidence of your word, and the positive role models that represent you. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on these topics with Benny, and I pray for the ears of our listeners that what they hear may be your words and not our own, and that they will learn something today that will give them extra hope, extra confidence, and if they're working out to this podcast, that they get an extra rep. Amen. Amen. Benny, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Very delighted. Why is 1 Corinthians 10.13 your favorite Bible verse, man? 1 Corinthians 10.13 is my best Bible verse because I have to give an example. If many of you know the transformation from Saul to Paul, when he was on the road to Damascus to uh, persecute the Christians, and Jesus Christ uh, um, appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, and he said, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus, you know, and Jesus asked him, why do you persecute me? And per se, I was $12,000 with the payday loans in 2008, and I was crying in bed. And, and, well, and, that, and Jesus had to do this one-on-one because I didn't trust man, right? Man, you know, people can say one thing, but they actually don't line up with their words. So basically, they're hypocrites. So I didn't trust that. So Jesus Christ changed my life behind closed doors, like I said, kind of like Saul the Paul per se. First um, Corinthians 10:13. And I was in bed crying and I, and, I, and I looked around and I went, wait a minute, where'd that come from? And I started crying again and I heard that scripture again, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And the second time I got out of my bed and I read it and it says, no temptation has seized you other than what is common to man. For God is faithful. He's not going to give you beyond what you can bear. But when it gets too strong for you, he's going to give you a way to escape so you can stand up under it. And ever since that day, 
I was like, oh, God, where are you? Let's fast forward 15 years to today, 2023. I'm living in abundance, spiritually, financially, emotionally, because Jesus Christ has changed and transformed me from the inside out because of that scripture. He revealed himself to me as true and real uh, as, as being, you know, the one and only God. So that's why that scripture is important to me because the real encounter that I had with Jesus Christ to transform my heart, soul, and mind. Wow. That's incredible. That verse that you were, ta- that you were referring to um, with Paul on the road to Damascus, just for our yeah. listeners, is uh, Acts chapter 9. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. a, that's, an, that's an intense one. Right. Yeah, totally. And and so and so he was transformed from the inside out on mm-hmm. that day. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's something that you can relate to then, huh? Right, totally. Real life. Real life. Thanks for that. Let's get into where your bodybuilding began. This is a bodybuilding podcast. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. let's kick things off. Let's kick things off with a question that we received from the audience. This is okay. one that Hi- that Hiro e- that this is the one that Hiro emailed us right before this. Mm-hmm. So the question, I don't know who said this, but they would like to ask, um, at 59, you look like you could still win an open class in a pro show. I can agree with yeah. that. Yeah. What, <laughs> what's the key for longevity in, in the sport of bodybuilding? Not just to live a long life, but to live a long life ripped. Uh, to live a long life ripped, just like I, I said in the email, number one is your nutrition. Uh, a, a lot of us adapt to the, the, the training and exercising and weightlifting, but we try to keep the, the old uh, way that we ate. Let's say for an example, my identity when I first started training was in fried chicken coming from the South. <laughs> so I, I learned how to train and then they, I, I read about nutrition. I'm like, what is nutrition? Okay. Boneless skin is chicken, breast, fish. Basically, no sugars, no processed food. Uh, you eating all natural food that you cook from home, even being careful for what you eat at a restaurant. So in order to live a healthy, long longevity, uh, ripped life is uh, your nutrition. And I drink nothing but water. I, it's either spring water or distilled water. And I drink this water first thing in the morning. And then I go, you know, I sit on the toilet because you got to clean out all the old food, which is toxins, right? That uh, mm-hmm. your body needs to shovel out and put in the new stuff. So just think about bad breath, acne and all that stuff. It's not from the surface, it's on the inside. You got to start on the inside. Mm-hmm. So in order to live that long life, like I've been living, it's, it's nutrition, nutrition. I've been doing this for 30 years. And am I perfect? Yes. Every now and then I'll eat cookies. I'll eat Snickers. Matter of fact, after the show, I had a cheeseburger and I had bottomless fries from uh, Red Robins. But how often do I do that? Ask me again how, when the next time I'm going to do that. Probably three months from now, four months from now. Who knows? But I don't go around thinking about, OK, when my ne- next sugar fix is going to come. So in order to live a, a healthy longevity, a, a, a rip life, it's all about your nutrition. It's the deficit number one. And then when you start losing the weight, it's a surplus. So you got to, you got to be able to understand how to play with your, your nutrition, right? Okay. Well, I'm down to 190. Let me pick my protein and carbs back up. So that's on a consistent basis is what you do. It's not a temporary thing. It's a long-term thing. So, and you got to learn uh, the, the knowledge of it. You can't just go, I want to do this diet, but not understand why you're doing it. So it's not about what I try to teach people is just um, and, and how to keep it as I teach them the knowledge and experience that I've learned over the years so they can keep it long term. So that's that's the, the key to that. Wow. That is an absolutely beautiful answer to that question. Thanks so much for that. That's been the biggest thing that I've learned as well since my last show in uh, at, the, at the end of 2022 is to let the diet do the work. And right. not to not to overtrain. What do we all do as competitors when it gets close to a show? We mm-hmm. run our bodies into the ground. Terrible advice. Why are you doing right. so much cardio? Why are you overtraining right. so much? You yeah, know, true. it's 
it's it's all it's all in the diet 100 percent. and so i did the same thing on this last prep just to to get lean enough to be um how should we say respectable guest posing shape <laughs> right, <laughs> for, right for the for the open natural and 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 did hard and did hardly any card I actually trained quite a bit less and just focus on my and focus on my nutrition so right. i wish i would have figured that a, a, a long time ago <laughs> right yeah and I like and I like how you you don't you don't deprive yourself of those of those foods either. That's something that we're trying to teach our kids. Uh, personally, I don't I, I don't I don't ever consume sugar because it's just something that I've had a bad relationship with in the past. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I am taking my daughter out to get ice cream after this though because <clears throat> she pooped in the toilet, and that is that is that is a celebration. Mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we we've been getting past yeah. the potty training, and so that is right. a reward. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have two grandkids. I'm teaching the same thing: nutrition behind closed doors being the role model that they need in their in their life. I was impressed with them backstage. They they were those are your grandkids, right? Yes, yes. Mm hmm Yep. Eleven year old and a three year old. Yeah. And, and that's Cameron yeah. and Isaiah? Yes, correct. Yes. Right, Good memory. Right. Yeah. I, I was I was super I was super helpful. Don't be too impressed. I, I write down everybody's names, otherwise I forget them. Oh but. right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But, uh, but I was really impressed that they weren't just diving into the donuts and everything. Oh, no, the, homie don't play that. Not me. <laughs> Not when they with me, my me and my daughter, you know, they live in Tacoma. <laughs> so they live with my daughter. So they get all the fried chicken and whatever they want with her. Yeah. But when they with me, I, I, I'm a better role model by action than words. And when they're with me, they know they window is, is about this big. Papa, I say, what do you guys want to eat? Cameron, 11 year old. He know he say well with uh, turkey tacos, cauliflower pizza that I make from scratch, uh, yeah. uh, protein pizza, or uh, shrimp tacos, you know stuff like that. So I make all oh, this yeah. from scratch, and they see me do it. You know, camera like Papa, can I grade some of the cauliflower? So I let him do it. I grade, let him grade the chicken. I'll let him, and I got him on video doing it. So I, I'm a better leader by example, especially for those boys, because I, I can't let the system have them. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's not. You know, you, you, we are the temple of Christ. And right. I think it's either first or second Timothy four, eight, where it says that physical exercise is, 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 uh, important, but the spiritual exercise is even more important in this life and the next life. It's either in, uh, first Timothy, like I said, uh, four, eight or second Timothy. And I got I that on the teaching. I got that on a t-shirt. I, 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 well. I was getting I was getting backwards too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I got that on the front of a uh, a t-shirt. You know, I got a I got a cross, I got a bar inside of it, and I got that that verse, you know, on the on the bottom of the t-shirt. Yeah. I love that shirt. I wish you sold those shirts too. I was look I was I was looking for your link tree. Yes, um I think a couple days. Yeah, ago. I don't yeah, I don't have any of those <laughs> shirts on there, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it should be first or second Timothy uh uh four eight. First Timothy four eight is for yeah, for train for training of the body has a limited benefit. There you go. But godly but godliness is beneficial in every way since it exactly. holds promise for the present life and also and the for next. the life to come. Exactly. Amen. Yes, yes. That's if basically I'm, I'm, that's basically why we call this superset your life. It's a superset, right. and then the rest of yeah. it, and then the and then that's yes. where it starts is in the gym, yeah. and then the rest of your life afterwards. That's the whole point of going to the gym in the first place. It shouldn't right. take over your life. You should be better yeah, right. because exactly of training. balance it. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. man. I'm, oh man, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you're in? In, pub in public with your grandkids and you're trying to set the best example that you can and then people and then people just like give candy to your kids and assume that that's totally okay <laughs> I, I no i i am very well a lot of people that a lot of people know me and even if they don't know me still they will look instead of giving it straight to them they would ask me first and most of the time i say no that they they can't eat that very nicely. Cole, I don't have a problem because when I started this training, not only did I had to learn the consistency of training and eating, here's the discipline. The discipline helped me to build a stronger mindset to say no outside the gym. Very nicely. No, I'm sorry. I don't eat that. No, I'm sorry. I don't do this. You don't have to be mean about it. You don't have to be 
uh, or, or you just let people know I'm on a special diet. I can't eat that. So it's the same example that I have a voice for my grandkids, because if you leave it up to them, I know they'll take it every time. Yeah. But I, 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 I can't leave it up to them. And I mean, it, it's like I said, you saw my grandkids. They're not I'm not mean to them. I'm loving to them, but I'm a strong role model and saying, hey, sons, this is the reason why uh, this sugar is not good for you. Illnesses, mm -hmm. cancer and all that stuff, you know, it comes from what we eat. Yep. And, and it's very hard for people to break those bad habits after they've been doing it for 30, 40, 50 years. Number one, it, they, they, they've been doing it for so long. Number two, they don't have the support system. Number three, it's all the environment. If you ain't got the people around you that love you, that's going to help you, guess what? Okay, doc, give me those pills. Okay, I got high blood pressure. Give me those pills. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. If you changed the way you ate and got rid of the sugar and the fried foods, I've been there. I'm not talking, you know, like I just got here overnight, Coke. I had to go through a process. My identity was in fried food being born and raised in Houston, Texas. It took me a year and a half because I was my, my first marriage was I, I was married to, you know, my ex, my ex-wife. She was black and we both ate fried fried foods as young people because mm -hmm. that's what we, we knew. That's what we grew up on. And I told her it took me a year and a half. I said, you know what? Can you fry that chicken and eat it before I get home? Or could you just hide it and put it away? Because when I came home from work and I saw it, it was over. <laughs> oh, my God, that was so good. And then I felt really bad after that. Mm -hmm. But I had to break those old habits. And that journey consists of, of God building a foundation, building a rock instead of sand. You know, uh, uh, OK, uh, Peter, I'm going to build my rock. First, Peter was, was, was sand. He, he denied Christ how many times? And Three then times. God said, hey, on you, I'm going to build my rock, meaning I'm going to build my church. So here I am, that rock that God had built, even though I fell, the storm came and it knocked me down. But here's another important thing to the audience. I took 10 years off over here. I took 10 years off over there. But let me explain that from competing, not training. I still worked out. I never lost muscle mass. Oh, I took six months off. I took this off. I didn't do that, guys. Let me help you understand that. I take three or four days off a week. I train four days a week for two, two and a half hours. And the, the, the video, and I still lift heavy. Those compound exercises, that's going to keep muscle on you. If you don't feed the muscle, guys, you're going to lose the muscle, especially when you get older. And here's me, 59, but I'm on something. I'm on TRT. I'm on this. I don't even know what that is until I ask one of my young clients, what is TRT? <laughs> oh, it's testosterone. <laughs> Here's the difference. Look at somebody's skin and their personality before you judge someone for saying, oh, you on drugs, you on this, you on that. It's, it's not impossible to build muscle and it's not impossible to sustain it if you learn the nutrition side. If you master the nutrition side and you don't skip meals and you drink water and clean your system out, come see me in about five years if you keep this simple formula. It doesn't have to be hard. hundred so, percent. Yeah. yeah. Test T TRT. That's testosterone. Sipinate. It's, it's so popular. It's like, it's like the new yeah. thing. It's, and, and they think it's, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what, and what does it do? It robs you of all your other nutrients. There's a it number does. of metabolic processes that happen right. when, when you, when you, when you inject right. yourself with something and yeah. then, and there's a, and there's a lot of side effects that are, that are, unac that are unaccounted for. Mm -hmm. Then they got to right. get, then they got to get something to counteract the side effects. Then they got to get something to counteract right. the, the side effects of that. And it yeah. just never ends. What if you took all that money and just bought some better food, right. got a decent gym membership right. exactly. and treated your body like a temple? Well, because we live in a technology world, we get everything instantaneously. You look at me born back in the 1960s. I send somebody a letter. Here's five days later. Hey, man, did you get that letter? Oh, no, I didn't get it yet, Benny. Oh, wait, here it is in the mail. That's five days later. How soon can we send a letter or email now? Instantaneous within seconds. We've been bombarded with the fitness world that we can get results and build muscle, get in shape, be healthy overnight. I'm sorry, you guys. It's a process. One step, one day, one year, one month, one. It, 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 you, 
training is not training without learning the, the, the knowledge behind training so that you're able to keep it. If you're just training and you don't know the knowledge and experience behind it, you're not going to keep it. It's, it's not rooted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, na natural. And, and another thing why I'm so big anti-drug, and it's not just enhancing uh, drugs, it's alcohol, it's um, uh, whatever, cocaine, because my brothers and sisters were alcoholics by the time they were teenagers, right? My older brother died at 27 years old, years old from intervening needle, needle. He caught two, uh, TB, which is tuberculosis. It destroyed his white cells. It destroyed his life. So at 27, I was 19, and I'm like, no, I'm gonna get, I'm a, I'm a little pack. So I'm thinking like, if he died at 27, maybe I'm gonna die at 27. So I didn't have any recollection of understanding life, but I seen his journey, and I decided as a young kid, I was 13, saying, I'm not gonna be like that. So that's why I'm anti-drug, anti any of it, and I don't hang around people that do that access to drink or they eat too bad, or whatever. I mean, I'll still hang out with you here and there, but I'm going to be me. I'm authentic to who I am. I'm not selfish. I'm not powerful. Jesus Christ, in order to be a Christian, you got to deny yourself daily, pick up your cross, and follow him. What's that look like? You're looking at it right now. <laughs> You're looking at it right now. You see the, 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 the fleshly part of me on the outside, but it's he that is in me is the one that make this power happen gracefully without any strain. It, it says um, in Proverbs 10, 22, when God blesses you with riches, there is no added sorrow. What does that mean? Not just financially. We talk about your health. We talk about your food, your job, your, uh, your house, your whatever. Whatever God gives you, you're going to live in peace with it. There ain't going to be no struggle. Proverbs 10, 22. The Lord's yeah. blessing, the Lord's blessing and riches and struggle adds nothing to it. Exactly. There you go, man. I mean, because this platform that God has given me, it, it, it ties in like like you say, it, Cole, it, it ties in to what we do, to what I do for what I've been doing. I thought I was just doing it on my own, but I didn't know God had been guided and leading me all this time, even though. I, I went off on a, on, a, on a fork in a road and going like, okay, what is my purpose? What am I doing? But now that God has changed my heart and soul for the last 15, going on 16 years, I got to let my light shine. I can't let this be about me because it, it, it's easy. You know, David uh, you know, or, or Samson, I want this. God is like, you know, that's not good for you, but God, I want it. God can go, okay, well, go ahead. But then it's like this here. We may fall, but God's mercy and his grace, especially the mercy, if we want to come back, he's going to accept you to like open arms, the, the prodigal son. Here I am. I'm, I'm sitting here waiting. So if you come back, I'm, I'm going to have a party for you. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. are you're, you're talking about you're talking about King David a lot. And certainly he's someone that. Had, that was completely brought to his knees and had to put all of his faith in God. And he didn't know if he was going to make it another day or not when he was being hunted down by King Saul. Mm -hmm. um, not only did he have God on his side, though, but he also had Jonathan on his side. Right. Who was like, son, yeah. who, mm -hmm. who was like, yeah. who was like, who was Saul's son. Yeah, Saul's who was son. Like, yeah. Saul's son. Uh, David's best friend. Yeah. Right. Have, have you have you had a training partner or a coach or someone that's had a simple similar impact on you the way that Jonathan did on David? No, this this journey, everything I have and I know I have to give glory to God because of my upbringing. I I, um, I had to learn everything on my own. I, I had a workout partner. I had two workout partners. This is when I didn't know God like I know him now. I mean, I accepted Christ in 95. But nobody taught me and helped me to understand that it's a lifestyle, it's a relationship. So once I uh, uh, made God my everything and I have a spiritual relationship, I, I'm still friends with those guys. I've been knowing them for almost 30 years since I've been training. But we no longer hang together like we used to because I'm not that person. Um, you know, because they, they're still, you know, talking world. They're still talking this way and that way. 
and, and you know, hey, this is the time church start. We can go have a salad or drink a cup of coffee. But other than that, Colt, Jesus Christ has been my partner more than I can say. Since the, it's the thing is, God knew us before we were born in the womb, and He has been my partner since then, and I didn't know it. I almost committed suicide in the Navy. A lot of people don't know that neither. And, you know, God saved me for that. I looked at that journey. All this stuff happened for a reason. Just so me, God saying, yep, I was there that time too. Footprints in the sand. Yep, I was there too. I was there over there too. I was there. And I, and I cried. So he's been my workout partner. He's been my, uh, my, my strength. He's been everything. And uh, am I perfect? Are you perfect? Nobody's perfect. Cause I still, you know, I want to cut people off on the road. I want to, man, why are you driving so slow? Move. So <laughs> I, I, I pray and repent every day, uh, but I go back and do it again. So that's what it means that we're not perfect, but we still, we got to uh, uh, confess our sins daily to Christ. So we won't have that stronghold that Satan won't have that stronghold against us. So yeah, I, I, don't, I don't try to be perfect. I don't have to, but I don't use my liberty to be stupid. I'm going to use my liberty to go, oh, it's all about me. No, it's not. Practically speaking, when you go to bring your sins before Christ and when you confess your sins, how do you go about doing that? Do you do you, you, do you incorporate scripture like Psalm 51 or something? No, actually, I just I just uh, have a normal prayer uh, relationship with, with God. Um you know, first thing in the morning, like I said, I get up, I have my water, you know, I, I go to my sanctuary, which is the lab, lavatory. Um, and then I, I, I'm i grateful in God, you know, like to thank you for providing a roof over my head, clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, food I eat, blah, 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 blah. I go on and on and on. And then I say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Uh, you know, the guy I cut off or maybe I looked at somebody wrong or being critical, judgmental. Uh, if any selfish and pride is in me, Lord God, please forgive me, you know, and then I start praying and then I start reading. So sometime I will I will quote scripture, um, um, you know, even though I've done this or done that or what my family is going through that uh, Romans 8, 28 says that we know that all things work together for good. But for, uh, for those that love God is called according to his purpose. Or yeah. um, uh, trust in the Lord with all that heart, lean not on your own understanding, acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And, Amen. you know, no weapons formed. I mean, I, I go on and on. And then I start uh, reading the word. Don't, don't, st don't stop. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, man, it's, it's this uh, um, God that's in me, and he come alive. I mean, he's alive every day, but he come alive even more when I have my one-on-one -on -one time with him first thing in the morning. So I, I really don't quote the scripture all the time. I just have a normal conversation with the Lord. And this is what I try to explain to people. And how do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? It's like me and you talking right now. You, you can't see him, but he's there and he hear you. And it took a long time for me to understand that. But how did I get this? I read his word and then I read other books outside the Bible that gave me more clarity of scripture. So, um, and, and whatever you do in life, if you want to, if you're going to work out, you want to train, you want to live a, 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 a rip, a longevity rip life, pray about that as well. Cause if you try to go on your own strength, your own strength is going to run out, but God will give you strength of eagle wings where you won't faint. You run and you will, I mean, man, God will give you everything. Um, you know, no matter what it is, that promotion, that, that, uh, that finance or raise or whatever it is, it's, it's, it's hard to explain to people, but I live everything I'm talking about right now. Thanks for the Romans 828 reference too. That's one of my favorites. It's highlighted mm -hmm. in my Bible and it's got a and it's got a marker on it because sometimes I need to check and just make sure it's still there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even though what we go through, people, you know, God is God is there. So mm -hmm. what what are some of those books that you were mentioning that helped you to understand the Bible better? Uh, let me see. And you know what? Here's here's the insightful thing about that. I knew you was going to kind of ask me that, but let me see if I can find some of them. Right now is one of them I'm reading. It is called, and this is a good one for men and women. Oh man, it, it is amazing. Let me, um, let me find the title of this one here. You bet. 
And I, and I love how you make it a, a conversation with your creator too, because that's, that's what he wants. He wants to, he, right. he, he, he wants, he wants your relationship. He doesn't, what did, what did he say through all the minor prophets? He doesn't want your sacrifices. He doesn't want you. Yeah. That's th th these are ritualistic things to be able to help you come closer to God. But at the end of the day, he wants your heart. Not right. Not, exactly. Not, he not knows go, everybody's heart. The motions. It's the same thing right. in the gym, right? You can, you yeah. can train it. You can train and you can wander. You can go through the motions. Yeah. Here's one book I'm reading. I'm uh, reading now. It's called Discipline of a Godly Woman by Barbara Hughes. And this is just not for men. I mean, for women, it's also for men. It is so, oh my gosh, it's amazing. It is amazing book. Another one that I just got through recently reading is called, it's uh, my gift. I have the gift of exhortation. So I'm always trying to hone that and understand that gift and walk in it and use it. I'm doing what I'm doing, like I said, because God gave me that platform. It's my ministry. So mm -hmm. this book, it says your gift of exhortation. That's one book. There's another book. Uh, Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Uh, let me see another one that I that I uh, that I read. I said, uh, what is this? Uh, let's go back. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that that's so many books that I have written. I mean, I've read. Oh, man, it's just. Uh, and then here's another one. Let me see. What is what is it? And I, I get them all from it. And, they, and they're. Um, they're ebooks, and I and I've been reading for the last, I mean, religiously for for the last six or seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's uh, this one here is uh, choose to be greater than me, living life in God's way. Uh, let's see, there's a let me see where's another one at. But yeah, it, it's so many of them, man. I mean, when I get rid of when I get done with the other, one, I just go on Amazon and I type in, you know spiritual books that blah 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 and whatever strike my my mind is i feel like the spirit is saying that book right there just like this this one i'm reading uh discipline of a, of a godly woman that book this book is not just for women it's for men i mean it is so i'm like wow because it's talking about surrendering yourself to god no matter this mm -hmm. this lady hated her neighbors and then come to find out that the neighbor's kids was not these people kids that they adapted those adopted those kids that the family left behind. So these kids were rowdy. They were loud. They were this, they were. And then, you know, the lady prayed God say, Hey, remember, I love all people. How do you know these people's circumstances and blah, Oh man, it is, it is so powerful. And that's, that's a few books. Uh, another great book that I recommend for everybody is uh is by james allen as a man think it it's about this big i would grab it it's it's it's, it's, a, it's on my shelf over there yeah it's tiny i, oh, I love that wow. book such it's, a good isn't one isn't that powerful it's it's a small mm -hmm. book i mean the environment i was in that's why that's why i preach if the environment is toxic that means you got to get out if the people are toxic that means you got to get rid of them if they ain't helping you to grow and teaching you something, you got to get rid of them. Is that hard to do? Okay, talk to me about that. I left my family when I was 19. I cried and I cried and I cried. I've been on this journey alone. You know, I had my family, but I still felt alone. I didn't, I didn't, I mean, it's just a lot of mistakes that I've made in my life, but I, I thank God for his mercy of not giving up on me, not giving up on you, not giving up on any of us. So this is so huge. Yeah, as a man, think it. It's a, it's a, you can read that book in about 15 minutes, but I tell you what, it is like you read a 500 page book in 15 minutes. It is, it is so powerful. So powerful. That's a very good yeah. description of that book. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Those. I'm going to, I'm going to add a couple, I'm going to add a couple other resources onto those too. Cause a lot of, our, a lot of our listeners, the number one thing I hear whenever I get, whenever I give a book recommendation or to my clients too, is I don't have the time to read because like a lot of us don't, right? Like to actually sit down and read a book. And so mm -hmm. I, 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 so, so I do a lot of audio commentaries and in, in, in addition to my inductive and uh, de devotional study around the Bible, mm -hmm. but two that I wanted to throw out were Kay Arthur, love Kay Arthur. She has, a, she has a way of giving you the tools and equipping you to, to be it, to be able to inductively study the Bible. Mm, and, okay. and I'm going to, and I'm going to add on to that, uh, faith family worldwide. You can type them in on, on YouTube. The, okay. 
the, 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 the leader's name is Dominique. I've just been into their work the last couple months uh, going through the minor prophets and they're, they're doing verse by verse through a lot of these books that are kind of challenging to understand. Like I'm, I'm going through Amos right now. Um, had no I idea know I'm, I'm going to Zephaniah. That, those are the minor prophets. Yeah. I'm going to Zephaniah. Oh, right. myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm just now, yeah, I'm going, I mean, man, I, I never stopped reading the Bible from Revelations to Genesis to yeah. Revelation to Genesis to Revelation. Revelation. I mean, dude, you never. Oh, man. It's like, oh, my God, I've never seen that before. And it's been 16 years. You weren't ready to see it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Cool, man. I wrote those books down. Nice. Thanks, man. Um, what um, have you ever doubted your faith since you were saved? Uh, of course I did. Um I, I don't doubt it now, but like I said, I accepted Christ in 1995. Um, and I was expected to feel a fuzzy feeling. I was expected to be more in love with my wife. I was expected for my mm -hmm. bills to be paid. Uh, <laughs> but none of that happened. So I was still more, I, I was a lukewarm Christian. I was still more carnal than I was uh, spiritual, meaning my flesh was still a in control my emotions were still in control so i looked over at the at the jones's grass which which looked greener oh my god look at the jones's grass oh i'm gonna go through a divorce and i'm gonna go over there to the jones's grass but here's the doubt in my faith once i got over to the jones's grass just like david found out that the jones's grasses was artificial it was fake mm. it wasn't real so my being the doubt in my faith made me fall, made me doubt Jesus because my flesh was easily roused back up. Another reason why, because I still watch the wrong TV shows. I still listen to the wrong music. Here's those things that if you want to change in Christ Jesus, it's uh, Romans 12, 2. Um, um, be no longer, com uh, be, uh, what is it? Let me, let me, let me look it up. I'm, I'm, be, I'm, I'm, be, I'm, I'm yeah. grabbing it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Romans don't 12, don't be uh, uh, conformed to the pattern of this world, but be renewed by your mind. It's daily so you can know the perfect will go. that God has for you. And that's the transformation. And like I said, because that happened and I doubted my faith, God had to step in and do a Saul to Paul, per se. And now uh, uh, you, you think about it. What you said is in the book of Acts. Once Jesus changed Saul to Paul, he went against all the hypocrites, which is the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? Because he knew that the gospel was real then. Anything, you guys, including, and I don't say these words, and this is just me and everybody got their opinion. I went through some things in life that nothing never touched me, even trying to commit suicide. So you want me to believe something that's out in the world. You want to tell me don't go outside because something is going to get you. I'm sorry, I'm not that guy. I live the normal life because Jesus Christ is the one in control. And we only got one side of the story. You think about that. Nobody else, even today, nobody else can put nothing out there about what happened three and a half years ago. But Code, I want you to tell, I want to let you know, I deny myself, pick up my cross daily and follow Jesus. I don't follow man. I don't follow circumstances. I don't follow situations. I did not panic. My life did not change. I did not lack nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I'm just saying, I, I don't mean to sound selfish and proudful, but I, I, I'm speaking for Saul the Paul. You, you, you Pharisee, Pharisees and you Sadducees are hypocrites. You putting mm -hmm. all these laws on these people and you ain't living it by yourself. Okay, who are, who's the Sadducees and the Pharisees today, right? We tend to think the Bible is outdated. Your president, your government, those is your Pharisees and Sadducees. They ain't living by what they're telling us. It's I'll today's Democrats and Republicans. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be happy when, you know what? You know where happiness start, uh, people? It starts with you. It starts on the inside. It's not, I'll be happy when, if that's the case, you're going to fall to anything that comes up in the world. So I'm not that guy. God has given me a job, and that's to shine his light always in every circumstance. Amen. <laughs> I, I love I love how much emphasis you're putting on the difference between your will and God's will, 
Because yes. that's something. Because that's something that I, It's something that I struggle with identifying. Uh, Hebrews thirteen verses twenty through twenty one says, "Now may the God of peace." Who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd yep. of the sheep, with the blood of the everlasting covenant, equip you with all that is good to do his will, working in what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, whom be the glory to whom be the glory forever and ever. Right. So how do, how do you identify what is your will, which is probably rooted in pride, because that's the original sin, right. versus what is in, but, but versus what is actually inspired by the Holy Spirit. My will, like you said, is full of pride. I'm mm -hmm. not going to ask him for forgiveness. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not going to do that. Versus, Lord, give me the strength in, in your will to go over and, and ask for forgiveness for what I say to Colt or what I say to Lisa. Lord, forgive me for what I said to, to Liz about her marriage, blah, blah, blah. And it's not scriptural. You know, trying to trying to uh, look down on someone. And this is why I pray every day and have to be careful in my flesh. When when it's God's will, it's going to always line up with scripture. Mm -hmm. Or if you pray about it, it, God is all about good. It's never about evil. So you got to be careful. Right. And to, especially in today's world that we live in, evil. Is, and it talks about this in the Bible. And you know this, Cole. It says in, in the last days. Evil is going to be good and good is going to be evil. Uh, a lie is going to be the yeah. truth and the truth is going to be a lie. Yeah. It's happening right now. Yeah. So yeah. the difference is, is that pride will step in and say, I'm not going to do that. But if it's the will of the Lord, it's all about forgiveness. And then God is going to give you scripture. God is going to, going to say, hey, you know what, Benny? This didn't line up with my scripture. Or, it, I mean, it just, everything's going to line up with God's scripture. And then God resists the pride, but he uh, uh, elevate the humble. And that's why I, I always uh, step down in humility and say glory to God. Satan would love me to say, hey, it's about Benny Mobley. Yeah. And me being spiritual minded, Colt, I, like I said, I've been to Arizona. I, I spoke on stage. I've been to LA. I've been to uh, 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 New Orleans here recently. And I said, God, I want to talk about you because this journey is not about Benny Mobley. I want to talk about you. I want to lead people to you. It's like this here. God said, if you love mother, father, sister, brother, kids more than me, you're not worth my kingdom. Here's why. Because you're going to gain brothers, sisters, houses, cars, whatever. Because everything we have is not for us. It's for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. It's for the kingdom of the Lord. So, the foundation that you see, the body, the health and all that, it's not about me. I, I couldn't have did it. I probably would have still been eating fried food. I probably would have still one of those people go, oh, I got high blood pressure. But I know the reason why. But I don't want to change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So it's, it's, everything is huge there. This is this plan, um, um, a platform. For those listening, the... Um... The end, the end of days that he was talking about how 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 how, th how there's an increase of sin and an increase of turmoil in the world. Read Romans chapter one verses eighteen through twenty five. That's what's happening today. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever felt silly for believing in God or like a wussy for giving your life to Jesus? No. Not at all. Um, I, I just was um, lost. I didn't feel confident in believing in Jesus and, and talking about him. I mean, I would I would talk about him when, you know, back in 1995, 96, 97, those those early years that I gave my life to Christ. I would talk about it. But did I believe what I was talking about? I mean, I knew I thought because I knew a few scripture. You know, Matthew 6, 33, first seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah, then we get oh, everything we want. Yay. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. But that's not the case. Um, but I, yeah, I, I can't say that, but I can't say I, that I was still lost. I, I couldn't, I didn't, I thought I had a relationship, but I was still lost. But today, here's the, the 
my uh, professor, my teacher, my science, whatever, which is Jesus Christ. I learn how to talk to people. It's part of my conversation of who I am. So I never feel silly or ashamed to talk about Christ because it's part of my conversation. You know, oh, you know what? It's like this here. I'm a spiritual man. I'm a godly man. And this is da, 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 da. So, yeah, definitely. I, I'm. Oh, man. It's like I said, Saul the Paul is the only way I can explain it. And, and like Jeremiah said, I'm not going to speak of God again. I'm not going to speak of this. But what what did, what happened? Jeremiah's like, I couldn't shut up. It's like a fire shot up in my bones because that that excitement of Christ that's in you, that spirit, man. I'm like, I can't I can't keep this to myself. It's exhilarating, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a daily thing. God allowed me to build my body first. And now everything is reversed because he allowed me to build that temple foundation to where it's at right now. And now it's like I'm, I'm just on cruise control. <laughs> but uh excuse me y'all it's been 30 years though <laughs> it's, been, it's been 30 years you know and it goes fast yeah that's a, it goes fast that's amazing what do they say life is like a roll of toilet paper the closer you get towards the end the faster it goes exactly it rolls right on off after that like whoa i didn't mean to take all that off <laughs> <laughs> like, crap <laughs> yeah yeah so what is the afterlife then? It's like going, it's like going to Costco and having all the toilet paper you could want. Right. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. So you were, you were talking about drugs and alcohol earlier. Um, has, ha, has the use of, ha, has your devotional life been something that replaces the urge to have a, have a beer and unwind at the yes. end of the night? Or if you're stressed out instead of eating fried chicken to, maybe take some time to pray or figure out what's really happening, happening on a spiritual level. Yeah. Um, back then when I was married, I failed because I didn't allow Jesus Christ to, uh, uh, fill all the voids in my life. Um, now all the voids are, um, are filled and they're replaced with his spirit. The, the, the partying and drinking that I used to do with my buddy, the uh, promiscuous dating that I used to do, uh, still watching, you know, these TV shows, anything on the TV and feel comfortable about it. Now, um, I stay in the spirit every day, every minute, every second, all day long. And I learn how to hit. Here's another big thing, uh, cult about life and, and, and mm -hmm. giving your life to Christ. I learn how to control my mindset. How do I control it? My fleshly man is down here. My spirit is up here because I feed my spirit every day. So you become what you feed. Think about feeding your flesh every day. You, your flesh is going to think carnal, but now mm -hmm. my spirit. So here's what that looked like uh, of controlling my mindset. I don't watch the news. I didn't watch what was going on in the world. I heard about it. I didn't watch any of it. I didn't listen to it neither. Um, uh, I don't watch the toxic, nasty TV shows or the music anymore. I control what I watch. I don't, I don't have cable TV. And the only time I, I turn the TV on is during the football season. As soon as it's done, it's, I, I turn it off. And I see all the filth and all the garbage. And I say, how in the world would people sit up and read this or, or list, watch this every day? So I control my mindset that way. And uh, every void has been filled because I've surrendered everything to Christ. Uh, alcohol. I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I, like I said, I no longer follow the pattern of the world. I've been renewed. I don't have to come home because I don't have those days. I don't have, oh my God, I had a bad day. I had, because God have pit, put me in my ministry of what I love to do is basically teaching people. Yeah. So I, I don't have those urges. And when I did do them, I did it excessively where I didn't acknowledge God. I, I, I backslid. I didn't acknowledge God. And now that I acknowledge God single every day, I don't have the urges. I don't have anxiety. I don't have none of that. Okay. How do we get anxiety? How do you, how do we get this? How do we, because our mindset, we think about it. Oh my God, I'm here. Oh my God. That's the world making you think one way when you should be able to think on your own. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just 
Man, and it's so so important for myself. And and you know, I pray that your your podcast and continue to grow and prosper. Thanks. That whatever next door God has for me to keep on going and speaking, but I want to make sure that He's in the forefront because Satan is tricky. He never give up. He, he don't come at you straight on, looking straight at you. He's going to come at you on the side, especially if you're a strong believer. He's going to come on the side of you and try to nudge you a little bit. Hey, Benny, uh, exactly. in, the name of Je- in the name of Jesus, he, uh, submit yourself to the Lord. And guess what he got to do? He got to flee. A lot of people don't understand that neither. And then plus, if you can say Jesus Christ all day, but if you ain't, if you ain't living it, guess what Satan going to do? He's going to laugh at you. Ha, 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 ha. You belongs to me. You ain't living that life. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. He'll, he'll take your whole faith and spin it on your head too, and he will Big stop. Time. He 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 is, he is so he is so relentless. So we just, yeah, we, we, yeah. we got we got baptized about a year ago. Um, I was baptized as an infant, and then uh, and, I, and I think and I think Taylor was too. Actually, I forgot. <laughs> but we got to a point to where to where, to where we were like, you know, it would it would be a wise move. We're we're commanded as disciples to mm-hmm. to to be baptized, and so for that reason, we decided to go right. ahead and do it. And the week before, the our anxiety was through the roof. The spiritual mm-hmm. warfare is very, 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 very yeah. real. And yeah. and, she, and she was onto it faster than I was because as guys, mm-hmm. we try to over intellectualize things and try to make and try to get sciencey right. about everything. But there's a lot that science cannot explain. First exactly. Of all, first of all, the creation of the earth. And, and no they ain't working there. for they ain't working for Christ. I'm sorry, I don't listen to them. That yeah. that's just me. And they. God is the one created it all. He created science. Science, he worked, they work for Jesus. But they yeah. come with they come with scripture and talk about what God. I'm like, man, you just another man with another job. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you know, and, so. and then and then give it give it a year, and then <clears throat> science is gonna disprove that. And we go, oh right. wow. I, I guess the I guess the I guess the Miller experiment, what <laughs> what know, wasn't yeah. wasn't even a thing. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah, man. Totally. You were saying how before your when when Hira reached out to you that that was an answered prayer, and that it, coming back to and that coming back out of retirement to guest pose was an answered prayer. Why is that? Uh, because I've always heard the saying that God works in mysterious ways, right? Mm-hmm. So how everything happened, and then like I said, I'm I'm, I'm very spiritual minded, and I and I always remember what I pray about. Um, you know, everybody asked ask me last year because I brought one of my young clients to the show just to let him see, not just through words, but I was explaining to him who I am in the bodybuilding world. As soon as I walked through the door, like, oh, my God, Benny, getting hugs from everybody. And then here was Hyro. OK, hey, Benny, you're going to compete again? No, man, no, 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 no. So here was Hyro sitting on the end and he says, would you guess pose? And I said, yeah, I think I'll do that. And I thought he was just asking me a question. <laughs> Two weeks later, he come on Instagram and say, "Hey Benny, what about using this for the for the poster?" I went, "Oh my God!" He was serious. At the time, I didn't realize that God's hands was in it. But then I thought to myself, "This is happening for a reason." So I embraced it. And now, you as an MC, I got to talk about my relationship with Christ mm-hmm. uh, and my journey as a bodybuilder, which tie in. And then here I am on a podcast with you talking about it again. That's answer prayer for me. <laughs> that that's a prayer. I'm going like, oh, okay, God. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you know, like I said, I I I I'm, I went through another a second divorce uh, because I I did a uh, uh, a Samson and Delilah. You know, basically, God was my parent telling me, saying, "No, this is the Delilah. We don't want this." So mm-hmm. I basically chose that through my flesh. Because my flesh, that was 16 years ago, right? That we we had uh, we met each other and then we got married. My flesh, my emotions is the one that uh, said blah blah blah. That's why God says sexual immorality mm-hmm. will blind you to things. So I, I was God showed me the red flags right away, but my flesh, like I said, Samson Delilah, God as my parent, God, but I want her though. I want her. Well, you're going to find out. She's going to cut your hair off. And she's going to find out your strength. And she's going to try to take everything away. She did. So that's what happened. And I, 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 I hung on to that as long as I could. God hate divorce, but he do give her, us a choice. Meaning, if I do get divorced, I better stay in his realm. I better still serve him. 
God, please forgive me. Now bring the wife that you have for me, the list the, that bound in heaven that comes down here on earth. So now I'm looking for the mate because number one, spiritually, we got to be up top. Number two, I, I'm not part of the world. We in the world. We, we I don't want to be able to, I don't want to sit down and watch everything and everything uh, every, under the sun. Number two, I'm very whole. Or number three, I'm very whole. She don't have to be as strict as I am, but I need her to understand and, 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 and be able to communicate. I love talking about the Lord all day because, man, this journey, 59 years of my life, God knew every one of us before we was formed in the womb. And to be where I'm at today, Colt, of my environment telling me you ain't good enough, you're going to be an alcoholic just like your brother, you're going to be in jail, you're going to be on food stamps, you're going to be everything. But Jesus Christ said, no, watch this, Benny. And I'm not a magician. I'm the one who created everything. And I got you. But I didn't know that. So now I'm sitting in the spiritual realm going for all God's blessings. When that young lady come, I'm going to know. <laughs> I mean, I'm transparent now. I'm authentic. And I tell people, if you don't want to know the truth, don't come and ask me. Thing is, I'm not going to beat you up with it, but I'm going to tell you the truth with it. Even how you know, do you, a couple, go ahead. How, how do you communicate that? How do you communicate your faith in a place that comes from love and not from judgment? Uh, my stories. Here's how, here's how my clients loosen up. Here's how everybody loosen up. I try to explain to people it make it, I, I it sounds like I'm talking about myself because I'm trying to get into storytelling. Uh, that's a solution to the problem. I got to always look at me for that change. I got to always look at me for happiness. So if I can do this, I know you can do it. I got faith in you. I, I know you. And, and it's a natural thing that God has given me to do that. And I've been doing it all my life. So what I say, I use myself. Oh, I grew up on food stamps. Oh, I'm not the best reader. I was a $12,000 with the payday loans, blah, blah, blah. How many people have skeleton in the closet and they're afraid to, to share anything like that? But see, God have changed all of that. I'm living in abundance. I'm talking about the past. Don't live in your past because God got a better future. And, and he's not done yet. I'm not complete yet. Oh, man. Uh, uh, when, when he bring that, 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 that spiritual wife that he had planned for me in heaven all this time. Oh, because my prayer to finish my, my race is that I get the family thing right. Because of my home environment, I didn't have a male role model. I was uh, raised in a single parent home, uh, drugs and alcohol. We grew up on food stamps, government assistance. I mean, made fun of. My prayer is that I find that right woman, that she understand me, I understand her. Because I'm gonna get, she's gonna be my queen, and I'm gonna be her king uh, before I die. And I got, and I, and I hope sooner than later, because I got those two grand boys that I need that woman touch. I mean, my daughter is fine, but but it's, I mean, not to judge her, but she's got them in an environment that's not cool. Mm -hmm. That that's not cool. That she, neither one of those boys have a father role model. Be, because, but see, here's me. God knew they needed me, because they moved to Texas for a minute and they moved back. And I told my daughter recently, I said, God knew you know those boys needed me to be a real role model around them. So. Yeah, um, I got a I got a handful of uh, uh, Christian single ladies that I'm training right now. That uh, I'm just gonna get. I'm just gonna give your cell number to them, and then you guys can be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, oh, wait a minute now. Hold on. That'd be like that'd be, that'd be like me choosing. Because uh, <laughs> like, uh, I I mean it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. Um, so switching gears a little bit and, and just, just for the record, that was an answered prayer for me too. The, 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 the entire, the entire open natural was, it gave me something to focus on. It gave me an right. opportunity to take my eyes off myself. I'm like, I'm guest right. posing. Like who cares? Like, you know, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to look good. Posing is my favorite part anyway. So let's mm -hmm. get, so let's get our diet nailed down. It gave me something to train for. And, uh, it was, it was, it was a good experience that way too. Mm -hmm. And and, and, and I've just been dying for an opportunity to incorporate more of my faith and right. to be able to share and to be that's able to share more of that. I mean. There you go right there. 
Right. And, answer and, prayer. And, and here we are having this conversation. Yeah. Answered my prayer yeah. too. Because I was like, thank you. And, and you know, I was reading, uh, like I said, the discipline of a godly woman. I was reading uh, the part in there about love and, and, and being disgruntled because a neighbor is being rowdy. And the lady saying, I hate my neighbors. But then the friend said, you know, what about Jesus Christ? And, and Co I sit up there and just start crying. And I'm like, you know what, God, I'm sorry. I ain't perfect. I'm sorry. I still struggle. God, I'm sorry. I, I mean, man, I, I was just bawling away. But that's the humbleness and the love of Christ to have that relationship because I didn't have a father. Mm -hmm. All my mother said was go to school, wow. get a good education, but she didn't have the action to show us. She didn't have an education. So it's kind of like some stuff still bottled up in me as a child and looking at Christ himself as my everything, my father and saying, man, God, help me to get this right. Help me to, to focus on the race like Paul said. And that day that I hear your words, like sweet as a honeycomb, well done, good and faithful servant. Oh, man. I mean, I was just bawling away. And that's my devotion time with the Lord. First, I read the Bible. Then I, I read my ebook. So I, I spend my first part of the mornings in my devotions, praying and reading. And that's what I want that wife, that that this third wife to be that God have chosen for me. And, and we understand each other. We have fun. We goofy like, oh, Benny, that's your friend. Oh, no, that's my wife. Man, you guys act like that's the relationship. I oh, know she's not me and I'm not her, but because God have given me a gift to understand people, I want her to understand me. Is she coachable? Is she teachable? I know mm -hmm. I am. I want her to be able to say, wow, he's 59. He's never had any medical issues. He's never been on any medication. Why? Because what I've been doing for the last 30 years, Cole, we get sick by what we eat. Why we don't educate ourselves on that? I mean, I go, I, I got free medical from the from the military when I was in the military and I'm done within 20 minutes. My my medical files are just like this and I'm gone. Like, wow, you have nothing in your medical file. And I know my doctors. I say, yeah, because I don't depend on you. That's why. Because I'm teaching. I'm going to teach you something. Sit down. You want to know about nutrition and how to get uh, healthy? Oh, man, I know them. I do not let them. Ooh. <laughs> and, and here's another story about that, Coach, about how God orchestrates your life. It's a part of that. Also, God, Satan tried to destroy me. When I first started training in 1993, I had an allergic reaction. My, my eyes were bloodshot red. I was blood. And I went to the doctor. They diagnosed me with hepatitis A. And I'm like, what's hepatitis A? Um, they tried to tell me that I was eating from dirty utensils and blah, blah, blah. Let me make a long story short. When I was in the United States Navy, I had a red dog tag. It said G6PD deficiency. I had been out of the service for four years. So I'm, I'm driving home and I'm crying. And I wasn't even thinking. But this is how the spirit just led me to my drawer. I went to my bedroom. I took those dog tags out. And I said, hey, wait a minute. And that was all God. I wasn't even thinking. I got on the phone and I called the doctor back. And I said, hey, doctor. When I was in the Navy, I had a, a red dog tag. So if anything wrong with you in the service, they'll still take you sometime, but they'll put a red dog tag on you, mean caution. So I say, doctor, I got a red dog tag when I was in the service. Uh, it says P uh, G6 PD deficiency. Oh, we know what that is. You had a allergic reaction. Ever since then, I never depend on the doctor again, ever. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Through my yeah. blood is what they diagnosed, right? Through my blood, which what I took, I had allergic reaction. That's how they do it. People, we get sick by what we put in our mouth. Oh, man, I'm telling you, the devil tried his best to take me out. Tried his best. But God said, no, he's anointed. No. <laughs> man. Oh, <laughs> Big, big, yeah. big pharma doesn't want you to be healthy. Big pharma no, wants don't. you to, they want you to be dependent on them. Yeah. And and thing is, you have billions of people across in the world and more than billions of those people are dependent on doctors mm -hmm. because of, because of they, they lack of want to be educated. Oh, I got a degree in this and grease and that, uh, but you weigh 400 pounds and your liver and your kidney is no good, but you smart. But when it comes to eating, because in order to be healthy, in order to be spiritually, you're going to be lonely. 
but not in a bad way that people don't understand. You, 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 that means that you don't fit in. And this is what I try to model to my grandkids. You don't have to fit in. They don't have electronics. But the 11 year old, he has a bank account. I'm teaching him financial literacy early because nobody taught his papa that. God taught me that. It, it, I'm gonna tell you, it, 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 we know a lot of people, but the close people are small because we don't fit in. Oh, you weird for being healthy and eating like that all the time. Oh, you weird because you don't watch this series on, on Netflix and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, let me be weird. At least I'm truly happy. Are you? It sounds like so. Yeah, it sounds like someone that fears man more than they fear more than they fear God's opinion. And the whole world is that way. And I mm -hmm. understand. I, I gotta, I gotta, like I said, I gotta keep myself humble because I was once upon a time in that in that world. That's why I fell. You know, went through that divorce, started watching everything on the TV, drinking, you know, being promiscuous, dating, and and just. Believe in the lies that Satan, because see, it was my weakness, but but Satan could take away my health. He couldn't take away my training and working out. He couldn't take that away. But the promiscuous thing and all that stuff, that was my weakness because I come from a single family home. But I'm not using it for an excuse. I'm using it as a story. And like I said, what you said earlier, how do I share with people without coming across like, you know, how do I come across, you know, how do I show them that I, I love them? And sometimes I'll tell my clients, they've been with me for a while. I say, hey, I love you because that's Jesus Christ in me. I love you. They're looking at me like, uh, I say, Christ loved me. I love you. So that's him speaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Speak, speaking of stepping into a different arena, you stepped into a different arena when you did your first bodybuilding competition, which was the NPC Emerald mm -hmm. Cup. Mm -hmm. And you and you said that you almost quit. Is mm -hmm. that a... Is, is that a story that you wouldn't mind sharing again for our audience? Oh, of course. Um, like I said, at first, the identity was in the fried chicken. Um, and, and here's how it happened, right? Uh, my neighbor, Barry Perry, uh, 93, this, he was 21 at the time. I was 27, going on 28. He went to the athletic club, hey, $10 down, $10 uh, a month. So I went with him, and I ended up joining the, joining the gym. So I'm looking around, don't know what, nothing about nothing. So I got a book, start reading, okay, this, 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 this gonna help you grow squats, it's gonna help you grow deadlifts for your back, blah, blah, blah. So I saw this poster and it says register, NPC, Emerald Cup, blah, blah, blah. Matter of fact, it was in, uh, uh, I think it was in, either in more theater back then or the Paramount. Um, I did it and, and I mean, cause I was ripped. But I was I was skinny ripped and I'm going, man, I'm going to win out of the nine guys called I play seven. And, and how I was by you? my I was uh, about 28, 29 at the time. OK, um, so about my so 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 a little younger than me, kind of when I first started. Gotcha. OK. Yeah. And, um, you know, I thought I was all that, you know, I was ripped and uh, that was nine guys. I played seven and I was walking downtown Seattle. And I'm like, man, I ain't never going to compete again. And it's that thing. I had my Oreo cookies in my bag, not Oreo, uh, oatmeal cookies in my bag. And I was, I, I mean, I was by myself. I was talking to myself. I'm like, man, I'm oh, giving my Oreo cookies. I ain't never going to compete again. So the next, uh, that Monday, I went to work and my, and my coworkers, hey, Benny, how did you do? And I said, well, you know what? I, I didn't do as well as I thought I was going to do. You know, I'm, I'm not going to ever compete again. I, I quit. I'm done. And then let's say, uh, I think it was two weeks later or so, one of my coworkers said, hey, Benny, I seen this show in Renton. It's a small show. You should go do it. I'm like, I ain't competing again. It ain't for me. I'm not doing that. So I thought about it. I thought about it. And I said, OK. Hmm. So I registered for the show. It was only like three or four guys in, in the class, in my weight class. And I got first place. And I never looked back after that. So wow. now. Let's fast forward to 2023. I had to go through that in order to be where I'm at today. Yeah. Because when I got to the pros, same thing happened. I got beat down out of, out of nine. So, God, at least I was part of the top five this time. But it didn't devastate me as much as when I first started. I, I, like I said, I, I'm like, man, I'm not, I, I quit. I'm not going to do this. 
and and also what I've learned, I've I've, I've read this quote. I don't know if it was in uh, uh, "As a Man Think It." A uh, quitter never wins, but a winner a winner never quits. A quitter never wins, but a winner never quits. So I'm a winner. You're a winner. Anybody that haven't gave up in life and they felt like they wanted to quit, we're winners. It's Satan would try to tell you differently. But that's why I, I almost quit again. That was Satan's hand behind it because he know God had a bigger plan for Benny Mobley. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, it's just amazing. Like I said, Cole, I look back at the journey and I was like, oh my gosh. He'd been guiding and directing me all this time. And Satan tried to put his little two cents in to dethrone me. God is like, uh, no, because I'm going to use him later. <laughs> 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 and, and, you know, thing is about life too, Colt, and, and how I grew up and being judged and then turn out the, uh, the way people judge me. Um, I'm very goofy. I refuse to grow up. Here's what I learned. Who pay my bills at the end of the day? I eat six meals a day. <laughs> I mean, I got food, I got light, I got a roof over my head. Who pay those bills? Oh, you that said I'm gonna become a drug addict, I'm, I'm gonna be in jail. Oh, do you pay my bills? So why should I worry about what you say? But that was easy said and done when I was going through the process. Yeah. And this is also what I try to teach people. I said, don't be afraid not to fit in. Don't be afraid not to fit in. Because it's like this here. If you if you're afraid to fit in, not to fit in, uh, I mean, if you're afraid to fit in, not to fit in, that means you're not being authentic. That means you're not being real. You're being fake. Oh, if I say this, they're gonna look down on me. Oh, if I say this, they they're gonna they're gonna say, okay, who pay your bills at the end of the day? Who put food on your table? Who who keep your lights on? Oh man, it, it, life is life is short. I've heard it when I was a young man. But uh, this is, oh man, this is the authentic me talking to a younger man. The legacy to you, the legacy to my grandkids, be you. You don't have to fit in. Be unique what God have molded and shaped you to be. But if you don't have help, the journey is going to be long like mine. So if I can cut my grandkids' journey down to this size instead of this size, oh, they're going to be amazing. I tell them, I say, son, don't have to, you don't have to fit in. You got a bank account that I'm saving for you early. You know how to read. They're better than me at the, that young age because I wasn't a great reader back then. I mean, I could barely, and I was, a, I, I was I, my mother didn't teach us. She told us. My three-year-old, he came like, welcome, Walmart. How, how, wait a minute, he's three. But he's reading little words here and there. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to help him enhance it. Yeah. Cameron? It took me three months to teach him how to read. And that was five years ago, almost five years ago. And now the boy can read anything. And now I'm trying to teach him comprehension and understanding what he's reading. Other than have a big vocabulary, but he don't know what it means. So if I can shorten a span of, of fitting in and trying to, the system trying to brainwash them with all this stuff that's out there, oh man, it's going to be huge. It's going to be 100%. huge. 100%. That, that quote that you're that you're referring to a winner never quits and a quitter never wins is that yeah it? yeah that's yeah okay I, I just looked it up right now it's uh vince lombardi oh is it okay yeah because i read it i read it in the book i don't know what book it was uh, but <laughs> did, have, you, have you ever read think and grow rich by napoleon hill oh yeah 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 matter of fact matter of fact let me show you let me show you something Here, here's okay, my, my because, book my because it's, is right there. There it is, right there. There it is. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's in that book too. There we I'll go. Tell you, man, I got a lot of books. Of, oh man, here's another one I read. If you want to know who a man is and whatever, look at his bookshelf. Look at what he reads. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very observant. Man. I go to somebody's house. I can scan that house within thirty seconds. Eh. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, totally, man. I got all my books right here, right to the left, and I got a lot of ebooks on my phone. Oh um, heck yeah, man! You'll 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 love you'll love, you'll love our house if you ever make it out this way. Yeah, yeah. And if, and if I and if I ever make it to your house, I'm I'm bring, I'm bringing my journal and uh, all my sticky notes and um, I know right and my reading yeah. and my reading glasses. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, I, I got mine right here. I, I don't wear them all the time, but when I read the word, I, I got them on. And sometimes my computer, man, I'm on my computer like this, and I'm going like, man, what the heck? And then I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I feel <laughs> so I, I try to hide the little age identity sometimes, but I'm going like, you know what? I'm putting my glasses on. Hey, oh, I can see you so much better. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Then, and, 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 and there's and there's no nutrition or diet trick that helps you with that. You get to no, a point, you, no, you're probably going to need reading glasses. <laughs> not whatsoever. Yeah. Good stuff. Let's see. Had, an, had another question for you. On, yeah. What did it, what did it feel like? If you don't mind me asking, oh um, no, as, anything, as, man. I'm transparent. A, <laughs> all right, I'm a so 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 I'm a, I'm a highly competitive bodybuilder. I I don't I don't believe that um, that competing within the next couple of years is good stewardship. Um, I, I I would I, I want to be debt free. I want our business to be a bit more established. Um, there's totally. a handful. I want my kids to be a little bit older. I want to be able to focus and go. Okay, we're putting everything aside. And taking a and 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 I'm gonna put all my eggs in this basket in this basket and I'm gonna freaking get it. I'm not gonna get second place to someone that just that's 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 bigger again. Right. So right. so entertain me if you wouldn't mind, please. What did it feel like when you earned your IPE card? Um. A a I mean it was it was a an emotional uh, accomplishment. It was, um, um, it, it felt like I, I've arrived somewhere, which I know I haven't, but all my hard work had paid off. And, you know, like I said, it, going in with a winner mentality. I mean, it, it just felt like, oh man, hard work, that's what it, that's what it feel like. And then feeling like, you know, I was made for this. And, you know, this is the first time that Sakona and I have really talked about what happened when I won my IP card. Uh, I was WNBF first because back then you couldn't cross over and, and compete in other organizations. Because okay, I was going to ask you about the WNBF card next and what your, and, yeah. and what your thoughts are on the differences between the two. Yeah, they um, uh, now, I mean, that's no real difference other than organization. <laughs> you know, they try to make all the money. Uh, but I started off WNBF, and um, Tony Quincy told me about a show. He lived here in Washington. He told me about uh, uh, Kevin James and, and Linda James at the time, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, other Linda. Um, and then I read that you can't do any other organization. If you do, you disqualify your WNBF card, or, uh, blah, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do this show. And, you know, I, I was sitting backstage. I was contemplating. I'm sitting there. I got everything on, everybody walking around. I got all black on. And uh, one guy even asked me, he says, uh, are you one of the competitors? You just sitting here. I kind of looked at him like, uh, yeah. How do you think I get back here? Kind of thing. I didn't say that part. But when I when I took my clothes off, Sakona went, "Oh crap! I ain't winning tonight." <laughs> he, he he told me this. This is the first time he ever told me this, and I also told him I said because I nullified my one pro card, I said I wasn't gonna lose that night. Wow! And Sakona, and, and for that to come from Sakona too, that guy is jacked. I mean, you talk yeah. you talk about thick, hard, just yeah. dense muscle and veins popping out. Well, and, here's and the having, thing. He was that bigger kind of than I was. And that kind of mass, that's hard well, to that, achieve. Well, that's <laughs> what you just said, the last part. He was bigger than I was, but I was more conditioned. Oh, really? I was more, I got pictures. I showed him. I, I, I mean, I showed Hyro. He said, oh my God, I didn't know you had. I said, dude, I don't just talk. I'm going to show you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sakona. And like I said, the guy, when I stripped off my clothes, there was another guy said, hey, there's a guy, there's a black guy back there look like a little <laughs> Lee Haney. <laughs> but it, it was it was uh i know right <laughs> I, I know it, it was so funny though um but it was very uh gratifying it was and, and i always glorify god you you'll see me you'll see me do this i got pictures as a matter of fact you probably can go online and just look up any pictures of myself but i was like i was like thank you lord because it's hard to go through that that amateur rank again 
If you don't win that pro card and go through the amateur rank, that's oh hard. man, uh, yeah, I, I, know, I, I know, I know some guys that have that, that, that are that are requalifying for their pro cards, and I'm like, man, yeah. talk about you know, kind of being humbled. Yeah, that's that's hard, man. I'm like, oh no, 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 because I'm like, uh, uh-uh. uh. And, and the thing is, I had I I took ten years off. I, like I said, I try to explain to people, I took ten years off from competing. I still trained. Mm-hmm. I still train. And, and you know, another blessed thing about that training, um, I was out partying. I used to go out partying. I used to go out drinking. But this is how I, I did it. I cut everything off cold turkey. And again, I didn't know God was, was working. That's when the, the TV show that I used to watch no longer was appealing. Uh, the sexual immorality that I was having with, with my ex was no longer uh, gratifying mm. and, and that oh man all that stuff started like whoa what didn't happen and that separated us because I grew spiritually but we still I, I say this I said this God blamed Adam because Adam allowed the wife to lead and follow her instead of God instead of Adam saying uh, God said we ain't eating from that tree we shouldn't eat from that tree and I'm not going to do it so here's me. I'm the new Adam. You're not going to pull me into those TV shows. You're not going to pull me into that music. I'm not going to do that. That's the spiritual leader. But instead of her saying, oh, OK, yeah, you're right, Benny. You're right. You're right. That 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 separated us because why Satan attacks the woman first? Why? Because she is the weaker link, not not meaning she's weak in in, in character, personality, but uh, she's equal. But she's easy to manipulate. She's emotional. So that's what Satan, that's why Satan was so easy to come in between this second marriage. So, but um, it, it was very gratifying that that uh, the accomplishments was all glory to God, but it was all um, it was it was it was very gratifying. It felt so great, and I felt like I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not a failure. I'm not, I am successful. I am. I mean, man, it, it, it was amazing. And the lineup was amazing. And you know who else was supposed to have won? I don't know if you know Cohen Wolf. He he was, uh-huh. yeah, he was in that weight class too, the heavyweight, the, a light heavy. So Kona was in heavyweight. Okay. And uh, Cohen Wolf was supposed to win the light heavyweight class. But somebody named Benny Mobley saying, who's that guy? <laughs> Before the night was over, everybody knew who he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to be bragging, but, 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 but before the night was over, it's like, where did that guy come from? Hey, everyone. Coach Taylor Milton here. Welcome to Skull Bells TV, the official YouTube channel of SupersetYourLife.com, where you're going to discover a weekly upload of quick and easy to follow workout tutorials featuring Coach Colt, myself, or one of our athletes to keep your workouts fun, practical, and effective. Our family's latest keto carnivore recipes that fuel Colt's competitions and keep myself and our kiddos strong and healthy. Video uploads of the supersetyourlife.com podcast, now over a hundred episodes, your weekly dose of entertainment, education, and inspiration to fuel your life inside and beyond the gym and much more. Last thing before we get into the video, we're asking a big favor from you. This has been working beautifully. So if you would please think of someone you care about that would benefit from this video, go ahead and smash that like button, click the share button and text this video to them. That would mean the world to us. And while you're at it, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss more exciting content from School Bells TV because our team has lots of meat and lots of muscle coming your way and I promise you won't want to miss it. When you hit the subscribe button, you'll see a bell icon pop up. You want to click that too. So you're notified every time we release a new video. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world to us. Every like share and subscription helps our channel grow and supports our family's hard work. So thank you so much for doing your part too. That's all we ask. God bless you. And please enjoy this video. I took it for four or five years straight. My best deadlift coat is 600 pounds. And this is why everybody. This is why everybody is like, uh, uh, "Oh, Benny's on drugs. He's lifting all that weight." And I'm and I'm saying to myself, like, "Okay, tell me how you know. Give, give me a sign that I'm on I'm on an enhancing drug." They couldn't, because they don't realize people don't realize a process. 
I trained three or four years by myself before the two workout partners came. Okay. Um, and another thing, the, uh, I picked up a Flex magazine. That was another part of me starting my training because the, 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 what, what's around today, the Google and all that wasn't there. So I picked up a Flex magazine and it was the uh, one of the best things I could have ever done. The Flex magazine says, and I tell people this today, but you got to learn proper form and technique. If you want to put on muscle strength and mass fast, barbell, dumbbell, cable, machines, incorporate that workout. Okay, what are compound exercise, squats, deadlift, bench press, military press, barbell curls, da, 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 da. Then you go to the cable. Then you go to the machine. Some people, uh, the reason why they don't grow and put on that mass, because they stay with the same old weight, the same old weight, the same old diet, the same old blah, 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 blah. How am I still putting on all that math? But I'm smarter now, too, because I am older. I do feel the tightness in my joints and my uh, my tendons and my bones. I don't go as heavy as I used to, but I still go heavy to keep that muscle mass. And especially uh, when you're competing, uh, you got to try to stay as heavy as you can. But let's say the last three or four days for the show, though, you just you want to go a little light because you don't want those muscles sore. You don't want that water in your muscles. But let's say the week before the show, oh man, you still you still go heavy. You don't you don't back off. I didn't I didn't back off. Even even for doing the guest posing. Uh I, I my last leg workout was seven days before, which is that Saturday. And I still went up to 365 pounds on squats. I still went up to <laughs> what seven, eight hundred pounds on on the leg press. I still did leg extensions for the whole <laughs> stack, which is 300 or 245 pounds. The last time I squatted 365 pounds was, was with my Inzer belt, the, the thick one, the, the, yeah. the 10, the 10 millimeter. Oh, yeah. I have broke, one of those too. Yeah. Broke my rib again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's, it's also too, it, it's all about technique. Yeah. The, the, the easiest way I try to explain to people how to do squats is that your chest up, sit back on your heels, stick your hips out, and then go straight down. What I see people doing, they'll, they'll stick, they'll sit back on the heels, but they'll stick their hips out and they'll continue to go down in, the, in this direction instead yeah. of this direction. Quads, number one, is going to fire off. Number two, the glutes. And number three, those hamstrings. If you learn how to squat that way, oh, dude. You'd be amazed how much your body is gonna gonna just massively, especially your quads and your hands or and your glutes, gonna be it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Have you ever considered just saying, heck with natural bodybuilding? I'm gonna go where the real attention is at. I'm gonna be an IFBB pro. You could pro you you could be an IFBB classic physique pro. Why what 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 keeps bringing you back? To the natural federations because i started out in the drug i started out in pc i started out in emerald cup i kept going back to the emerald cup i kept going i'm gonna win i'm gonna win i'm gonna win in 1999 i came back and i was shredded and i, I can't find my my album i mean one day man if i could show if i had it i'd find out where I, I took it out of my other truck if i can find where it's at you'd be like what that was fourth place. And a matter of fact, that's, that was that year I actually, uh, another one of those things where I said, you know what, I'm done competing. That was part of my 10 year span. That was part of my, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quitting, I'm done. You know, but I never stopped training. Uh, but Dave Patterson told me, he said, Benny, you look good for natural bodybuilding. You will win. But they're looking for an emerald. You're natural. You'll never win the Emerald Cup. And I was like, you know what, whatever. Uh, I did NPC, but I did win the uh, Washington Ironman, though, 1995, uh, uh, NPC. It was natural. Uh, but it, it took, you know, the first year I placed, I think, third or fourth. So the next year I came back and I tweaked whatever that, that went wrong, and I won the overall. Um, but, yeah, I, I started out at NPC and – it is a, uh, it's not an evil, uh, uh, an even playing field. So I'm not going to take anything enhanced to try to try to get an edge, even an IFBB. And 
from my opinion, some of those natural guys that go over there and compete against them, and I'm going like, if you place and you don't something, I'm sorry. What, what did you take? Did you? Because they don't test you. They don't test you. So it, it's just so because I'm so anti-drug and I started out at NPC, and I don't want to get discouraged with myself and saying, man, I guess I'm no good at this. You're going against enhanced drug guys. Of course, you're not going to place among them. So that's that's why it doesn't it's, it's, it doesn't equate. It doesn't make sense to me. So wow, very very wise. I I I, I hate I hate when I have clients that that'll that'll say, I don't look like so and so on Instagram. I don't look like so and so on Instagram. I don't look like so and so on Instagram. I'm like, I, yeah, because most influencers that are on that are on that's Instagram. Fake. Yeah, and 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 they're and they're not they're not competing in right a, it, it, on a fair level playing field. Right. When you when you go to a show like the one that we just promoted together, the Open Natural, those physiques were out of this world. I mean, they were. Could you, I mean, could you, like, could you believe the, the 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 men's overall, the women's overall too? Yeah. But I mean, like, it, and it, even in the women's overall, th there there were athletes that had great muscle mass and had, yeah, and, and had veins popping out around yeah. their belly yeah. button. I mean, yeah, conditioning big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely incredible. That's kind of that's kind of the nice thing. And so I, I I I've done some NPC shows as well, and that's kind of my mindset going in is I'm like, all right, I know that I'm gonna lose the guys that are bigger than me, but hey. I got conditioning and I will right. be the leanest and, and, mother and, ever on and this And even stage. though <laughs> I, I still, I still gained some fans from that because I was conditioned. I was conditioned mm -hmm. big time. Well, 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 people, you, well, you can, it's easier if you're natural. Yeah. And and I had people come up to me and say, man, I'm surprised that you boy, you are ripped. You are da da da. But yeah, you look at me and you look at them, like you said about, you know, the, the, the shorter guy muscle bellies being thicker is that here I am tall and lanky and then here you are with these guys that it might be the same uh, uh, height but then their muscle bellies are thick yeah uh, and you can see it it's, it's kind of like you see the difference going wait a minute he's ripped but then this guy is ripped and big yeah and he's only like 190 pounds <laughs> uh, okay natural 190 drug 190. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so no, it just never, it never appealed to me to. And then another, another failure of my thing of, of what Satan had on me for a while, and and uh, uh, now that I'm I'm a good steward and what God have given me stewardship, is that I was going to get rich from bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I wanted my goal growing up. I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan. I grew up in Houston. Uh, I love the Dallas. Okay, I, I, wait, I, no, we we got we got to end this talk right now. I'm sorry. I know, right? Sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll, you know. <laughs> Uh, but my goal was to play for the Dallas Cowboys and, and uh, buy my mom a house like all these these kids did. Um, I played through high school. I went to a junior college. The closest I got was like an hour out of Dallas, Ranger Junior College. They had the same helmet as the Dallas Cowboys. I got a picture of it. I got pictures of that as well with the star on the side of it. And that's the far as I got. And that was in 1984-85. Uh, I didn't go back to college. I went to go live in Michigan with my aunt and them. But here come God again. I stayed there for two and a half years. I end up accidentally joining the Navy. Um, and, uh, um, you know, that's where I almost, you know, like I said, committed suicide. But then also God was really taking me away from all that and really isolating me. Um, you know, being in the Navy being here on the West Coast, living where I'm living. And people are like, man, Benny, how do you get here from Texas to here? And I say, United States Navy. And uh, I, I've been here, been here ever since. You know, and another thing I would like to do, and it's easy to said and done, I've, I got a lot of stuff on my computer coat. I want to write a ba very basic, simple book of what we've been talking about and put it for people to understand, because it don't have to be complicated. You know, it, it's just... Oh, I went to Harvard to do this. Oh, I went to Yale. Oh, I went to go do this. It's like basic fundamentals of life will take you a long way if you learn the depth and the understanding of what you need to do in order to become successful. So, but um, 
bodybuilding athlete, like you said, and, and, and I commend you for this. You're on the right path. Um, bodybuilding, I won't say bodybuilding, competing kept me broke. Mm -hmm. Compete. Yeah, I'm, doing too many competitions will make you go broke real quick. I tell everybody rip, that. Rip, oh, man, I, I was, I, I got my name out there. His how. Sometime I did four shows a year. Mm -hmm. I took a couple weeks off, got back on the diet. And here's another wedge between my marriage, the second one. You spend three to five thousand dollars a month competing. And I'm going like, okay, so is my money. But that was selfish because I thought um, once I got paid that that was going to nullify all that. But when you do get, but when you do win, coat, it's not equivalent to how much you spend. So now that I'm living in abundance, I got to be careful how Satan works. Even going on these stages to speak, I had to pay for these little, you know, uh, things that they put on, and they were expensive. And I got a mentor and a coach for that. And I told her, I said, I can't keep doing this because I, I need to be financial free that, that Satan don't try to come into my next marriage and say, uh, oh, yeah, he's not financially secure or he's not. Oh, oh, oh. You know, but if that woman is, is loving the Lord, she shouldn't look at me that way. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I want to, to because I'm that man. I want I want her to go. Oh, yeah, I can depend on my husband to take care of me. Spiritually, financially, emotionally, I want her to look and say, "Hey, I'm able to do that." So I'm, I'm looking, going, "I gotta, I gotta stop doing this. I, I can't be spending, you know, another three, four thousand dollars to go speak." And I mean, yeah, I, I'm getting a reputation to get my name out there, but I mean, also my, my mentor said, "Well, that's what you got to do in order for companies to say, let's hire Benny Mobile and we'll pay him fifty thousand dollars to come in and speak to our corporation." So that's the goal. But also, I got to be careful in how much money that I am putting into this when the return on the investment is not coming back in fast. So what you said as a young man, God is first and taking care and providing for your family is next. And then your job. So my experience and where I screwed up at and what I heard you just say, you're on the right path. Especially, you know, uh, spiritually, you got it financially. Thanks, Here's how God works on uh, um, financial blessings, housing, whatever. Anything that God given to you is not for yourself. It's, to, it's for the purpose and to glorify him with whatever he gave you. Your finances, your house, your, your vehicle, your clothes, whatever it is. I would add your own body to that list. Right. Yep. Right. And people 100%. try to get on me and say, Benny, why are you always giving people all this information for free? Why are you always this? Because I can't be bottled up and be a selfish person when I didn't learn this and, and did myself. God gave it to me. So I give it freely. You know, I want to get paid. Yeah, I want the money, but I'm not going to stress out about it and, and, and uh, lose sleep over it. Go like, oh, my God. I, uh, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. So, That's yeah. This that's, temple that's that's, that's fear that's fearing the world more than fearing God is what it all comes back to. Right. Yeah, that is true, man. That is definitely true. Well, we are just about at the end of the questions that I had written down for our outline. And it looks like we're gonna be pushing two hours here if we keep this up. And that's, that's as long as my video that's editor that's can <laughs> that's the hey, max, hey, that's the I, maximum length. <laughs> Cole, Cole, like I said, man. Oh my god. My next wife, I'm on fire for the Lord. I mean, I want, I mean, I'm going to live a normal life. I want to have fun with her. I want to, I want her to be my best friend, but Jesus Christ is our everything. Mm -hmm. But like I said, because God, all these years of my 59 years of my life, God knew us before we was even formed in the womb. And everything I've been through is to glorify him today. So I can talk about God until I want, I mean, we keep going on and on and on. It, <laughs> Man, we, we 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 need we need to we need to do a two hours just on yeah on 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 Zephaniah because I'm gonna come up because I'm gonna yeah because I'm just reading you know it's in the minor prophets God is always sending them warning these people it's kind of like hey God God's like okay God talking to y'all y'all better <laughs> y'all better chill out. <laughs> All right. and, yeah. I, and I know you don't. And I know you don't have to read them in order, but I am just because it's. I don't right. know. It's 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 simpler. But yeah, it looks like I got Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, yep, Zephaniah. Habakkuk, yep. So mm -hmm. right. probably like a few a few months, I'll get there. Have you yeah. ever read Micah? God, that's a good one. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, like I said, 
sometime I'll do Genesis the Revelation. I, I'll read the whole Bible a little bit over a year, and mm -hmm. then I'll then I'll start like in the New Test, on the Old Testament somewhere, or in the middle. So I started with the Minor Prophet just here a month ago, and then I'll go from there and I'll go all the way back to Revelation. So I'm I'm reading it from the beginning, the end, the middle, the da 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 da. -da. Well, you, you 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 have to. You can't just read one book and have all your questions answered. Like you like you you start if you're reading right. any of the prophets, you have to. You're always going to what Daniel, yeah. Revelation, Genesis. Right. Daniel, right. Revelation, Genesis. You have yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, and, and all the whole Bible is 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 amazing to me, yeah. especially uh, Daniel. The Hebrew boys is saying, "No, we ain't mm -hmm. bowling before you." I'm going like, "Okay, thank you." And uh, Job, oh, yeah. if we don't get into the scripture and understand how God give and take away and still glorify him, mm. you're going to backslide just like I did. You're going to backslide. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. And, and, oh, I want to uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, one, another one of my scriptures. And, and here's the thing. If you read the Bible every day, you don't have to know the scripture. But when you start speaking, the Holy Spirit will, will bring scripture. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Where did it come from? I haven't quoted that scripture in a long time. Uh, yeah. Is uh, Genesis, uh, I think it was uh, 50, 19, and 20. Yeah. What, Joseph, what Joseph said, what y'all did for, for evil, God meant it for good. For I mean, man, because it was a famine. So I look back at my life and I read that and I went. But sorry, hang on. One, one, one thing I just want to add to that. If you if you if you keep going, verse twenty one says, "Therefore, don't be afraid." So that's exactly. a base. So that's a basis to not have fear. Big time. And to have and to be and to be confident in your in your God. I'm sorry. Go yes. Because <laughs> we you look at the journey, and and I looked at it as all like bad, but God meant it for good mm -hmm. because uh, here you are today. Yeah. Oh shoot! So all the stuff that my neighbors meant for bad, that tried to tell me I wasn't good enough. So God, you meant it for good. So my brothers and you know throwing me in the pit was for me to go ahead of them so that I could save them later. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. And I laugh about this, and I say, hey, I call myself the Black Moses. Cause now, <laughs> well. Because now I'm, I'm trying to raise. Can, can that can that be can that be the title of this episode, please? I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm because now I'm trying to go back and get my family and say, hey, you guys, I've been on my on the mountain, and these are the Ten Commandments, and, and this is what yeah. God said. You don't have to put a veil on your face because Jesus Christ is risen. Uh, but uh, yeah, come on with me. I, I'm, I'm gonna show you what a promised land at, and we ain't gotta stay in the desert. Here's another joke I make. The Israelites stayed in the desert for 40 years. I did three years more. I did 43 years because the relationship with Christ didn't blossom until the last 16 years. Do the math. 43, 16. I'm finna be 59. God can do, wow. it says, what it says in, uh, I think it's in the book of Peter, that God, thousand days, a thousand years can be one day, and if one day can be a thousand years, right? So what mm -hmm. God did in 16 years of my life, I couldn't have never did it in 43 years, which I didn't. I was I was chasing my tail, especially on the financial side and on and on the, the relationship side, because I, I chose the wrong women. I had sex with them first. God showed me the red flags and I'm like, uh-uh, God, I love her. Yeah, Benny, that's your emotions, not your spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's your emotions. That's <laughs> <laughs> so you know a, wow. a strong thing about being uh spiritually strong and i tell people this that this is the first time in in three and a half years i mean because me and nadia we did try to work it out for a minute we was intimate for a minute but it was empty that's all it, it was just empty because we started this before we got married so it was kind of like um but i say this is the first time in five years i would never been in a physical relationship with a woman out there trying to seek but i'm in a spiritual relationship mm -hmm. do you know how strong my spiritual relationship is and or and i i'm 59 i have no libido issues i have no ed issues i have <laughs> none of that and and that's for me i don't watch anything sexual I, I don't, none of that i avoid anything that's gonna mm -hmm. make me tempt and go ooh, 
Look, even even when I seen the bikini girls, I had to turn my head. I kind of I, <laughs> I went like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna I, say, I, I I hope you weren't looking at my athlete because she's she's no, about your age. <laughs> no, I had I had to turn my head, man. I was like, no, Satan, I don't think so. Um, but that is so huge because I'm honest with people. Like I said, I'm transparent. The old fleshly me, because my flesh was stronger, I said, I would have been done slept with five or six women already and walk around like I'm all that, like mm-hmm. I'm like it's normal. Those are the 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 the, the skeletons in the closet. But yeah. guess what? I don't crave it. Do I have moments at times, but I don't entertain it. Oh, if you, if, I, you, if you if you do, you're done. You're absolutely I'm done. Done, done. Yep. Oh man. And that's why I say I learn how to control my own mindset now. I don't let the world in. I'm in the world, but not of it. That's a, that scripture also paraphrased. <laughs> that's when you really that, that's when you really gotta and that's when you really gotta <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's when you really gotta revisit first Corinthians ten thirteen. No temptation has overtaken you. Because he always right. does provide the way of escape. Big t- he always does. I mean, just like the Navy thing. Yep. I mean, I was almost tempted to kill myself, and then here come the little little angel saying, "Hey, you made it through boot camp. You heard all the horror stories. You wasn't going to make it through." And I went, "Hey, you know what? That's right." And I opened up the ship hatch and closed the door behind me. These are the same familiar words that I heard growing up. You ain't good enough. You're never going to make it. Jump, jump overboard. You're never going to make it. That's what the devil was telling me. But the little angel said, "No. Yes, you are." Remember boot camp? They say you weren't going to make it. You made it, right? Hey, wait a minute. Don't listen to her. She's not. Wait a minute. That's right. That's right. Open up the ship hatch, close the door behind me. Boom. Here I am. <laughs> one, of Satan's, one, one of Satan's biggest lies is that you're never good enough. Oh, my God. Yes. He, he's, ew, man. Wow. Yeah. And, and Mike, the, the other prayer is that I find this this wife, this whole wife, and that what we're talking, you and I is talking about now, that we're able to go around and speak to people, basic fundamental way and how to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You got to deny yourself. And even if it, le- it means leaving family and friends that ain't going to help you grow. I mean, well, you ain't got to leave them, but you got to keep them at a distance. Y- y- you know, because you can't let them influence you, especially if they're not living for Christ. Because, you know, me... Being the black sheep of my family, my brothers and sisters said to me, oh, you think you're better than us? And I looked at them and I said, yes, I am. (laughs) And when I go back to Houston, people don't believe the brother and the sister that's all messed up. They don't believe I'm their brother. And my nieces and nephews, they don't believe I'm their uncle. And I said, yes, I'm their brother and I'm their uncle, but I just made smarter choices. I chose not to stay in the environment and not to become an alcoholic and not to become a victim. That's the difference. So, yeah. I, 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 think, I think we should end on that. I don't think we can top that. <laughs> I yes, do sir. Have, I do have one more question before we were, before we run out of time. Okay. And it's kind of like the question that I asked you at the Open Natural on stage. When, uh, what advice do you have for those new to bodybuilding? Um, I would like to rephrase that question. Obviously, we both definitely recommend the Open Natural as a as a as a wonderful experience for competitors. Why would you recommend the Open Natural for natural bodybuilding athletes? Because of the uh, camaraderie, the the first of all, it's the friendship, it's the support, it's the encouragement, it's the uh, um, support from the audience it yeah. is uh um, oh, the, the crowd was unreal right it is 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 basically too that you're natural and it's an even playing field and you would uh feel accomplished even if you didn't place you would feel accomplished because you uh were able to get up there and build your confidence first of all to do that uh um as well as um uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's an even playing field and, it, and it's just something that, you know, you build confidence in to do. So 
doing the open natural and my advice is basically even plan feel the support and encourage, encouragement that you would have through not natural bodybuilding and uh even regardless of how you place depend on your your journey and your destiny you learn from each show no matter where you're at even as a pro i don't place where i want to place i'm gonna go back and try to fine tune myself it's you against you it's not against the other competitors it's you against you going out and saying okay that was my first show i got that experience well what can i do to get better right and that's that advice being in an even plan field uh the the support and encouragement you're going to get from people you don't even know and that's going to make you feel like wow i want to do this again i like this i didn't place that well but i like this because the, the competitors you know it's just like i said the camaraderie is the reason that i i am so, sorry i i, I almost no, i almost wanted to add and say what while, while you were talking too was that this it, it, it wasn't it wasn't even a competition it didn't feel like a, a competition mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. not 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 that it was a lame competition or anything it just didn't feel like a competition because the camaraderie and the family aspect of it was right. so much more, was so much more powerful i didn't see one athlete that was upset with how they placed that right. had a bad experience everybody left right. with a huge smile on their face and they can't mm -hmm. wait to come back right that's so true yeah, I mean, it, it, and you got this on on the podcast. If I was to come back uh, and and do guest posing next year, for me, nobody knew this, but I know. I look great on Friday. Uh, I carved up, but then Saturday I ate a salad and I put apple cider vinegar in my salad, and that made me whole water. Mm. I was actually more ripped and shredded on Friday than I was Saturday. So my goal for that is to really show you what real condition look like at a pro level. I mean, for most of you, you think like, oh my God, you look, I'm like, no, y'all, that's not where I, 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 well, yeah. So that, that's just letting you see that that could be tighter. That could be better, okay. well, um much better. I'm I'm glad. I'm very, very glad. I'm very, very glad that you addressed that because now you've given me a heads up. So I know that my conditioning needs to be extra on point this time Big as time. well. <laughs> pose your pose, pose, pose. Yeah. Well, and like I said, it's Amen. all about having fun too. It's all about having fun. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, I, well, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to, I can't wait to see you next year. Even more people. I thought, I, I, I thought you were peeled to the bone. I mean, but, uh, if, mm -hmm. but, if, but if you were even more conditioning, but oh, the whole water. Then, wow. Okay. This I got to oh, see. Oh, the water. <laughs> <laughs> it trust me. I come in looking a little bit like five times better than that. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> okay. Where can people go to find more about you? Type in Benny Mobley uh, in the Google, and there's nothing that won't come up about me. Uh, my Instagram, my Facebook, my YouTube, my Twitter, yep. which I don't use, um, my website, uh, my public speaking, everything is out there. Because I've been doing this, like I said, for 30 years, and now we live in a technology world where you can type people's name in and everything will come up. So, and, and then two as well, uh, through my email, you can find my email out there at um, mobleybenny.gmail, uh, mobley.benny1 at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, I, I am for hire, uh, public speaking. Um, well, also, um, since we're talking about this, this is also something that I offer. I don't know if you can see that. It is, um, I'll, I'll read it. It's a uh, Food prep coaching for better health. I help dedicated people achieve and maintain good health management with grocery shopping. Number one, I will go with you to the food shop. Uh, prepping food is made easy. Cooking demonstrations on how to prepare. I want to help you and show you, right? And then I'm going to let you cook. Also, you learn what calorie deficit is all about. I will motivate you to stay in a straight path and continue to make a lifestyle change. Total value of $160 for an hour and a half. Contact Benny Mobley, Bellevue Washington, mobley.benny1 at gmail.com. Uh, you know, and, and food prep and eating healthy, not that you want to compete. Everybody don't want to compete or whatever, but just to be healthy 
I can help that is uh, guide you as as well. So absolutely, yeah. And there, and there's links to all those in your Instagram profile on your LinkedIn, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And his Instagram is I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a link to all these in the show notes as well. Um, his Instagram is m o b e t t e r underscore hard body, just like it sounds. And if you do, which you definitely should, type in Benny Mobley in Google. Love it. Yeah, and everything will come um, up. It's with an <laughs> e at the end. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mobley is spelled M O B L E Y. So, right. Awesome. Thank you again so very much, Benny, for Anytime, all, for all of your time. Close to God, this, man. This was, you know this, me. <laughs> oh, this was such, such an answered yeah. prayer in so many ways. Yes, and, glory to God, man. I, I, I was thanking him, and I say, "Wow, God, that's a, this is a prayer answer. It's, it's a start. You open up the door, but also saying, God, what's next? What's what's the? I want to continue to be on fire to speak, um, but I mm -hmm. want to make sure that I'm glorifying the right thing, I'm not glorifying me. This is my story, but it's not about me." Right. We're, we're stewards. We're very grateful that we have these bodies and the time that, and the, for the time right. that we do. And we're mm -hmm. not going to have them forever. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Just make the most of it while we can. All right. Yes, sir. Well, thanks again. So, thanks. So, thanks again so much, Benny. Um, I really, I really believe that we're going to do a lot, a lot of work together over, over the next couple of years. And I, and, and I think that, and I think that the open natural is um, our, you know, yeah. our catalyst, our catalyst to do that and to continue help, helping and spreading the positive message. Oh yeah. It's an Praise honor. God, really. man. Yes, sir. Yep. Praise, Appreciate Praise it, God. <laughs> Thank you, Cole. Yep. All right, man. Talk to you later. Thank you, Benny. Bye. You got it. Wow. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this entire two hours with Benny Mobley. Oh my gosh. Uh, if you found this helpful, please pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Our podcast review of the week is from Matt. He would like to say, I've been kind of watching some of the usual prospects in the carnivore space for a while. Came across you on YouTube the other day, and I'm checking out some of your content and liking what I'm seeing so far. Thanks a lot, Matt. Glad that you like what you're seeing so far. Uh, your ratings and reviews got us to where we're at. So if you're not subscribed, please do that so we can continue to grow the channel and share the knowledge. And thank you all so very much in advance. And a big celebration. You'll never guess what just came in earlier today, but uh, we are restocked with Celtic Sea Salt. Finally, <laughs> placed a stock order about seven or eight weeks ago. This company, it's what they've been praying for. It's what we've been praying for. They are experiencing more business than they ever have before. So their lead times, that's why if you're looking for Celtic Sea Salt, if you're a fan of Celtic Sea Salt, and if you've been trying to find it online, if you've been trying to find it on Amazon and everywhere is sold out, well, we have it in stock now. <laughs> so I'm just going to read off of the uh, pur uh, purchase order packing list, actually, that I have right in front of me. So yeah, it's all just came in. Gourmet kosher Celtic sea salt. That's going to be a very, very good magnesium supplement for anyone that's training as hard as we do as competitive bodybuilders. Um, I do not supplement electrolytes personally. I didn't really do a whole lot of them on my last prep and, excuse me, in 2020. Uh, 2022 that is but this last competition prep that i just did um to guest pose i use nothing but sea salts for all of my electrolyte needs and the two that i used were the pink potassium cave salt as well as the gourmet kosher salt that has my magnesium my potassium and my and my sodium needs and a lot of other trace minerals all met and I mean, it's 10 times delicious than any other salt that I've had from the store. <laughs> so definitely my favorite. I was getting worried because my supply was running low, but uh, we got plenty of it now. All right, so we got that. We got the light gray, which is the classic one. That's That has a good amount of iodine in it too. So if you're looking for an iodine supplementation, um, that can help you out there. And then Mackay Pure Salt, that is our gourmet finishing salt. That's also in stock. Uh, we, we have samples of of of, uh, of the fine ground too so if anybody um any purchase whatsoever that goes through our website just ask and you are happy to have some of those um and then smoked flake river salt that is a favorite of danny conway's and robert sykes <laughs> it's a favorite of mine too i'm not gonna lie but yeah these are all on our website at supersetyourlife.com um check out our youtube video i'll put a link to that in the show notes as well 
that gives you a crash course on how to meet all of your electrolyte needs if you're a performance athlete using exclusively fresh sea salt. You can find all those at supersetyourlife.com. All purchases go towards supporting the show. So thank you very much for that. Um, one last thing, if you haven't heard about our new podcast with Jonathan Griffiths and Mark Ennis, it's called Carnivore Coaches Corner. So we three meatheads collaborate weekly to this. We've been doing this for quite some time now. Uh, we discuss listener questions, frequently asked questions on our one-on-one -on -one consultations and trending topics related to the carnivore diet and hypertrophy training, how to do both of those together. Thanks again, everyone, so much for tuning in. God bless, and we'll catch you later this week on episode 172. And I'm going to leave you with this. Be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 58.